Hello, everyone, and welcome to the UR Mark on the World Show. I'm your host, Devin Thorpe. Our episode today is being produced for uh, Forbes, where I'm a contributor covering social entrepreneurship and impact investing. Our guest today is Tony Sateri. He's the CEO of NCAP, a company that has developed a remarkable new technology that has broad applications, but I'm most excited about this spray-on antenna that can be deployed in emergency disaster kinds of situations. Tony, welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much and appreciate the invitation today. Well, we're really excited to learn more about this technology. Uh, give us a quick overview of how this works. Sure. So what we've done is we took the, the concept of uh, creating an antenna that could be deployed anywhere and, and broken into a thousand pieces. So uh, I'll give you just a little bit of science background without getting real deep into the science. Um, Tesla and Marconi invented a copper wire as an antenna that work, still works today in most devices. Um, we decided if we, if we were to make a conformal antenna or something that could be put on any type of uh, hardware or in any terrain feature, that we would want to make it so it could be applied in a liquid form. So rather than painting copper or painting a wire, we decided to relook at the physics approach to that and we use uh, nanomaterials to create some very small capacitors that allow the energy to free flow and then we put that material into a spe special mixture. One application of the mixture is a spray-on variant where we can literally take an aerosol can and paint a tree or side of a building or a vehicle with this material and we can connect to it through some different kind of mechanisms, some inductively and some through a cable with an adhesive and connect it to all sorts of different radio devices. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it does. That's a very good articulation of what it does. Now, one of the things that I uh, think I got from the material that we reviewed was that you your antenna works better than traditional antennas. Am I am I getting that right? You are getting that right, and I and I don't want to uh, to get real deep in this, but I want to give you some some of the reasons why. So, um, an inductive antenna is a uh, a piece of wire or an inductor where the the energy changes directions very rapidly, and that and that creates a heat situation on the inductor. It also creates a, a situation where the wire or the antenna actually itself creates some noise. So by taking this nano approach to it through a different materials approach and a different physics approach, it allows us to get better communication range and uh, both on the transmit and receive side with a, a similar size or even smaller size antenna using this material. It really is pretty amazing. Now, you recently uh, participated in the Google Solve for X conference. Tell us a little bit about that experience. Yeah, I will. That was a, a really wonderful experience, and, and uh, really first uh, first exposure we had for this particular technology to uh, to the world, and it was very exciting. Uh, what I really got out of that that made me very happy was knowing that there are a lot of people in the world that are trying to do big things, not just small incremental things, but take the, you know, the, the big 10x approach to things. And that, that was the group that we hung out with and we saw a lot of really interesting applications and ideas around that type of thinking. So we put a few people like that together and collaborate and uh, lots of amazing things can happen for, for good around the world. Well, I can, I can just imagine. Uh, I noticed that your YouTube video from that conference, we've linked to that in the uh, Forbes article, is uh, very, very popular, uh, more popular than most of the other uh, Solve for X videos. So I congratulate you. Clearly, you got some attention uh, yes. with your antenna. That's very exciting. Thank now, you. Tell us a little bit about how this could be deployed or has been deployed. I don't know which is more relevant, but how might it be deployed in a disaster situation? Glad you asked that. So th there's numerous ways it could be applied. Um, it could be applied, as I mentioned to you before, in this spray-on application where we needed to put up a, let's just say, a mesh network or a, re or a standard repeater system, but we don't have the way to, to build a tower or, or get it high enough for a traditional antenna to function properly. 
So we can apply this materials to like just about anything and, and then connect up and to whatever kind of device is used. Uh, one of the really exciting breakthroughs and things we've been developing for a couple of years that I think will make a very large impact in, the, in this world is going to be a what we call the comms cube. What, what that is, we've taken some of the things that you've seen out um, in disasters now, where you'll see a large, a very large semi-truck with a lot of satellite dishes on it, um, or just large, large, heavy communication equipment, and we've been able to shrink it down and put it into something much smaller, into the size of like a large briefcase, because this antenna material uh, works and, and functions much better than a typical antenna. Thus, thus it's a, and it's an enabling technology, so we can consolidate all these this kind of gear. So we've been developing a platform that is all self-contained, self-powered, that you could take into a disaster, and it will run as a triage system to tag and track things in disasters, uh, also display different kinds of maps, and also uh, provide a communication hotspot regardless if you have any infrastructure. So it's very exciting. It seems like it would be uh, really easy to deploy a network if you can uh, bring a, a briefcase in that would have some way to communicate with the outside world, and then you're running around the neighborhood spraying on antennas. It would seem you could put a, a neighborhood sort of back on the grid in a matter of hours. Yes, that's exactly right, and that, that's really the idea behind this technology. It's that first 72 hours where the greatest need is when, when people are trying to figure out where their loved, loved ones are or when the first responders are, are trying to triage what's going on in those events. So it's very, very exciting. Absent the network, the first responders themselves may not be able to communicate with each other or the outside world, right? That, that is correct. In fact, we've, we've talked to various communities. In fact, uh, uh, Marathon County, Florida had a big problem after a large hurricane a few years ago, cut off half of the, the, the peninsula, um, and we went and visited with those folks about the possibilities of using the, the, the comms cube to, to be a bridge to their network. Yeah, really, really inspiring stuff and, and exciting to think about. Uh, where did the idea for... Uh, this technology come from? How did you figure this out? Well, it's a, I'm going to give you the short version of it. It's very interesting. Um, I'm a technologist uh, born with it as a, a small child. Um, I had a father that was in the Air Force who uh, retired or, or uh, who had left the Air Force and worked for the phone company in Utah. And uh, I, have, I was kind of a sick child and he brought all the junk they, they were, he was throwing away and I'd make stuff out of it. That's how I got interested in electronics. And in, and in the radio space. Uh, my company previous to this one I was working on is called Near Field Magnetic Induction, NFMI. So using magnetic fields, short range on body to pass data. That, and that was doing exactly the, the opposite of what we're doing with this technology. We were focused on very short range communications uh, on body by using magnetic fields. So that spurred an idea with me which was if we could minimize the magnetic field, we would be able to save a lot of wasted energy, and that's where this nano concept came from. So I, I brought in our CTO, Mr. Rhett Spencer, into the equation, a very, very brilliant man, and we developed this material um, literally in, in my basement a few years ago. So it really came out very quickly, and we're doing something totally different in the nano field that everybody else is doing. Um, that, that makes it very linear and, and uh, reasonable to produce it very quickly. And I, I now I'm envisioning this as being a pretty affordable antenna, uh, yes. if only because the mag the manufacturing costs must be low. Even even if what's in the bottle in the spray can is relatively expensive, it would still seem to be cheaper than what what you would have to do in in terms of producing antennas in a factory. Can you give us some sort of cost estimate, comparison, or anything? Yeah, so it's very interesting how that works. There's there's many ways to, to look at it. So we can actually, let me back up. So when we when we commercialize this, which we're in the middle of right now, we're, we're integrating it into to products and devices that can use it kind of on the inside to make it better, lighter, faster. Um, so we have a couple mechanisms of manufacturing this 
One of the ways we do it also, we have a silt screening process where we can actually make stickers or pre-made antennas. In fact, I've got a small example of one of them here. Um, this is a little antenna the size of a credit card um, that can be plugged into a two-way radio or a router, router or other devices. So it's kind of pre-manufactured. Um, so we can we can bring the cost down quite a bit, just depending on what you know what kind of application and what kind of volume that we're going into. Um, but I can tell you something like uh, the cost of, of some of this communications gear. Um, we're we're far less expensive than than all these pieces compiled together. So, uh, without revealing too much on our raw costs, on it, just be a little careful on online. Um, it, it is reasonable to to produce and very economic, especially if it's done in mass quantities, where you we can produce several hundred thousand uh, antennas out of, a day out of this material right now. Wow. And, and it, you have the potential to also put this technology into phones and other devices, right? That is correct. In fact, that's one thing we're exploring now. We've got a couple different uh, uh, people and groups we're working with to vet that out. We've done some really interesting and exciting experiments on smartphones where we've been able to uh, give it a considerably bigger footprint around the cell site, but also the byproduct of that is the battery life from on the device goes up exponentially because the ta the phone talks to the tower and tells it if it needs its power turned up or down and it's really exciting technology so that's actually one of the opportunities we think is really neat because it really helps out a lot of a lot of things you know tony all entrepreneurs have days where they are up and excited and uh, can't wait to get out of bed and most entrepreneurs I won't say all, but most also have days where it's not that way. And and when it's not that way, we we kind of uh, sometimes look for some inspiration to keep us going through the hard times. I wonder if you have a, a role model or someone who inspires you that, that helps to keep you going when it's tough. Oh, thank you. I, I actually have a couple, and I'll, I'll touch base on a couple of them. Um, you know, the, the people that really impacted my life a lot is a, is a child were both of my parents they were both very supportive in different ways my mother didn't understand what I was doing at all but she supported it and all the bed fires in my bedroom and my dad with his electrical background he actually wired part of Cape Canaveral in his past so they were very inspirational to me um, a person I think a lot of people may be able to identify with was was Carl Sagan and uh, I don't want to date myself too much, but it was uh, he was one of the guys that really I just loved space and the whole idea of big thinking as a kid, and I still do. And I just remember laying awake at night, dreaming about what he had talked about. So that was some real inspiration for me. Um, but, my, but I'd also like to just really quickly just say, you know, my whole the whole team of folks I work with, we're a, we've got some really intelligent, really energetic people that really uh, help help me a lot. So. I think that's uh, really important to, to mention as well. No, oh, good, good. Now, I know some. You have a real passion for the potential applications for disaster recovery. You and I have met before and talked through that, and and I sense that that's a genuine interest. Why do you care about that? Well, it's it's important for me to give back, um, and I I don't want to just say that. I I know you've heard that a lot. Um, both from two perspectives. So I am an entrepreneur and uh, and really a die-hard uh, geek, to be quite honest with you. And so that's such a huge passion of mine. And is what you mentioned earlier. It's it's very difficult a lot of times to be an entrepreneur and inventor in today's world, trying to figure out how to get the capital and all of those crazy million things you you're worried about all the time. So first and foremost, I'd like to give back in, as we grow this thing and to those. I've been very fortunate to have some really, really great people help me in that regard. The next part is I, I actually ran on a, a local search and rescue team in Utah. My, my dad ran it for about 20 years, and I was fortunate enough to serve on that as a volunteer for 20 or 30 years, and we did some really wonderful things with that group and saved a lot of lives. And that's really what got me really passionate about wanting to take this technology into that space. You see all these horrible things going on around the world, and Technology can do, you know, it can never solve all problems, but it can sure enable some really wonderful things. So that's really why I'm so passionate about that. Well, that's great. That's great. Now, clearly, uh, Tony, you're doing a lot of good. You're making a big difference. You are 
creating a real success here. Uh, everyone who's watching, uh, we've got a lot of disparate interests, but I think one thing that unites us all that are, are involved with you today is we want to know how to do more good in the world. What, what tip would you give us to take away today to help us do more good? Well, uh, I'd, say, I'd say just get out there and do something. I mean, even if you don't know what it is, find something you're passionate about and go do it. And I, I'd like to mention one other thing which I think is really, really important for the world right now, which is nobody is too young to learn or get excited about their passion, especially in the technology space. And if we want to keep the world going and, and eliminate poverty and crime and war, nothing we could do is more important than empowering the youth to think for themselves and self-empower them wherever they live in the world. Oh, that's great. Great insight. Boy, there's so much evidence for that. Uh, I, I thank you for pointing that out. Well, uh, Tony, I'm sure there are a lot of people who want to know more about this. Maybe a lot, a lot of people maybe want a lot more. But so, so tell them how to get in touch with you and sure. how best to reach you and, and the best way to connect. All right, no problem. Well, I'm actually, the best way is by email right now. Um, my email is uh, T Sutera, so it's T S U T E R A at ncap.com, N C A P.com. Um, I'd also like to give one quick, quick plug to uh, a lady that I have a lot of respect for, who I think is coming up on your show here very soon, uh, Miss Desiree Mattel Anderson, who's also a big motivation in my life because she's one of the people that always thinks about doing good and that's her number one goal in life so I know yeah. she's got some stuff coming up but uh, thank you so much for your time today. Well thank you and Desi is great she introduced us I'm glad that she did because uh, it's just I love what you're doing uh, and it's fun to see the application of this great new technology and how it, it really stands to uh, bless and help others so thank you very very much for your time today. Well, thank you and thanks for what you do. Alrighty let's do some good. Thank you.